recording. It's basically for follow up. Does that make sense? Great. So the first thing I want to, to do is, is basically go in and launch Photoshop. And it is the Creative Cloud version. It's Photoshop CC 2017. And I think next week it's gonna be an update. And it's gonna be, a, uh, I think, Photoshop CC 2018, they're gonna call it, probably. Yeah. No idea. The only thing that you might, the retouch tools are kind of more or less the same. I can already tell you, because they already post few things online, the rest is kind of NDA. The brushes are gonna change a little bit. They are gonna be the same Photoshop brushes, but they're gonna change the way you're going to manipulate. We're gonna look very fast at brushes here today to retouch and they made it a little different because they feel like your artist had some problem looking at this preset. So that's the one that's gonna change. Of course, there's gonna be a lot of other changes, nothing that's gonna hurt us in retouching. One thing about retouching and depending what kind of retouching you're going to do, is you can do like an immediate retouching using the tools that I'm giving you. But also, if you're a good artist and you have kind of a flair for art, that's when the retouching starts to be really, really good. It is intense to be a retoucher because when you are a professional retoucher, you basically sit in a room with certain lighting and then sit there and do it. So if you have like, temperament of somebody that likes to run around and give suggestions and things like this, a professional retouching might not be good, but this seminar is geared basically for retouching your own stuff. Retouching your portrait when you're looking to look for a job, retouching some of the compositions that you're gonna do. So let's say you're graduating, you take a picture and your picture is not too good, you want to look a little bit better, we're going to look at that. Also, you want to do a small composition about something and show some people, uh, not that professional, but you're going to eliminate stuff, that's what we're going to do. And then later on, if we have time, we'll do a little project. One thing is, I want you to see if you can use this um, mouse, if you have any, you have some, it is recommended to use a mouse when you use it with Photoshop for attachment. <coughs> or recommended, of course, to use the Wacom tablet, which is the best, because that works with masking and drawing, and it's pressure sensitive. You're gonna see that it's a little harder to use the trackpad. I know some of you have the new computers, so <coughs> the USB is not compatible. You need to have um, another charger to do that. You know, it's like, right, you don't have USB, right? There's like nothing there anymore. It's like, right? And then they don't think about the artist. But try your best, and if not at home, figure out what you can do. And that's why we have that. I want to show you what we have in our files. And then some of you are still copying it, which is fine. Okay. Great. And you can see here. The this is the retouch seminar. And the way I divided it, I divided it to subject. One has a retouching folder. The other one you have headshot, landscape, retouching project. It's something to do with smart objects. And we're gonna talk about it right away because we're gonna use smart object when we have that. Everything inside you can see I have like a document in there, but you see I have the headshot. So I took some headshots and you can see here, this is um, headshots and maybe we don't like some stuff there. So we're gonna choose few of the stuff and we're gonna go in there and fix and we're gonna decide which one we're gonna use and which one we are going to do with it. Then I have another thing here in the landscape that you have here, I have different kind of images and we're gonna go in and retouch that. In the retouching project, I do have a step-by-step -step PDF for it. So if we get to that and we wanna play with it and you guys gonna go back and redo it, 
you really have a step by step with screenshots and everything. But we'll see how much we're going to do. And this one is kind of a silly retouching project. We'll take two heads, we'll retouch them, we'll put them in another body and put them inside an environment. Um, and that's kind of like you have that and then in the retouching project, you see the elements and then you're gonna see more or less, this is the final one, which is not the body of the person, but we retouch them and they look a lot nicer and we will play with it. Does that make sense? So how many of you have the files already? Do you have the files? Yeah, I'm having it. Yeah, do you have the files already? Okay. Okay, you need the files? Yes, it's fine, I got it. Oh, you got it? Oh, okay. But one of the main things we're going to talk about it is about smart objects in Photoshop. How many people know what smart objects are in Photoshop? Okay, good. So one of the ways that it works with smart object, and I use it for retouching, because I can do the before and after very fast with smart objects. I also can take a lot of layers put them together and have them on my screen without seeing the other layers. What smart object, object will do behind the scene, it will maintain the original image the whole time whenever you manipulate it. We have two kinds of smart objects in Photoshop. One is a linked smart object and one is a regular smart object. For today, we're basically gonna use regular smart object. The linked smart objects are more for like prototyping, repeating items, which we're not gonna need to do that. So when you open Photoshop, did you launch Photoshop? I know some people never used Photoshop before. So I'm gonna look kind of like, this is my regular workspace, the essential workspace. And if I, just go in and restart it, you see it looks like that. Is your essential workspace looks like this, like mine. Or you see a big screen with a lot of images when you launch Photoshop. If you see a big screen with a lot of things, that means that when you open Photoshop, you have something called the start screen. And in the start screen, you can see. So if I'm gonna go for a minute, and I should have done it before. Show the start screen and show the recent file and just do that. And then I'm going to launch Photoshop again. You'll see maybe my Photoshop, it's gonna look like yours right now. Is that gonna look more or less or something like that? Not with so many images. Cause I've been working with some stuff in Photoshop and this is basically all the recent files I just played with. So yesterday I did like a little butterfly in Photoshop and that's why you see it kind of like I have the Photoshop and the butterfly over there and everything is in there. This is my recent file. These are my creative cloud file that really connect to my iPad. But for you guys, you can look at the regular file. This is the last model file, the CC files and you can look at everything, some, something like that. If you do not want to see this screen anymore, you can basically go to your preferences file. Because some people feel like it's kind of annoying, this screen. Maybe you want to see it the first time or the second time. It's up to you. If you do not want to see it anymore, everybody using Macs here? Yes. Go to your preferences file. The shortcut for preferences file for all of the Adobe software is Command K. If I wanna show you where it is, it's under the word Photoshop, but it's really important to remember the shortcut because it's the same in Illustrator and the same in After Effects and the same in InDesign and the same of all over. And it usually, you wanna go your preferences to tell your software how to behave. So you can see, and we're just gonna look at the first one. You see over here, it says show start workspace when no documents are open. If I do not wanna do that, I'm just basically gonna turn it off. It says show recent files when it's opening, I turn it off. 
I can also say use a legacy new document interface. What does it mean? If you click on that, when you do file new, it's gonna give you the regular file new that you had before. So let's just click on that and click OK. Now I can, I have basically to go in and turn off Photoshop and then go back and relaunch Photoshop again. Luckily, it's fast. Do you see how fast Photoshop is launching now? Remember how it used to be like a few years ago? <laughs> really fast. And look at that. I don't have the start document anymore. On the way, all the way up in the upper right corner, these are my workspaces. We can do the top one is one that belongs to me that I made. But this one is the essential, is the regular workspace. We can also go in and let's say we're going to work with painting workspace today. So if you click on painting workspace, you also see your brushes, you see your navigator, you see your swatch panel, and all the way down you see the layers, channels, and path. So let's all for now stay in the painting workspace. If I want my toolbox to be two columns, I'm going to just click here and make it two columns. Basically, this is what we want to know right now. Now, and Lou, you let me know, the people who did not use Photoshop before, just let me know and I'll come over and help you or your neighbor can assist you a little bit and we can figure it out. Is that okay? Did you use Photoshop before? Yeah, okay. So I'm going to go and open a file. So do file and open. You also can see the word browse in bridge. How many of you are familiar with bridge? Bridge is wonderful. It is your browser. It will help you look at the file before you open them. And especially when you do kind of retouching and high end files, maybe you want to see them before you open them. So let's all go and say browse and bridge. Usually it takes a second until bridge is launches, launching. And look at this, my brain showed up to something that I don't know where I went there, probably <coughs> long time ago, it showed up to something that says art in my pictures, right? So years ago, before computers, you see here, I can share it with you. I was a t-shirt artist years and years and years ago in New York. While I was a student for art, I was selling t-shirts. So that's probably one of the artwork that I put on my t-shirt, you know, and it was for computers. So you basically had to hand draw it the whole time. Each time I had to copy it to the t-shirt. Didn't look so good, but I sold some stuff. So I'm going to go to my desktop. And in my desktop, I have the files that I gave you. And the files are USC Special Seminars. And if I'm going to double click on it, you can see here I have Retouch Seminar. I can actually make a shortcut with it directly to Bridge. What does it mean? I can click on it and drag it over. And now if I go in here, look what I have. I already have all my files here. So I can, if I feel like looking at the PDF, I don't have to open it. I can go into the PDF and start reading it and look at that. I can also go into any kind of folder. So I'm gonna double click on smart objects. And look what I have there. I have one image. Do you see this image? If everybody sees that. So from Bridge, you basically, you can go to File and Open, Open With, or Open Recent, right? So you can say Open With, and I can decide, I want to open it in After Effects now. Maybe I want to do an animation. I want to open it in Illustrator. Maybe I want to trace that. Or I want to open it in Photoshop. What I do usually, I don't even go to file open. I right click on the file and look what I get. Open and open with. So directly I go to it. What I, why do I like it so much? Because 
you can go into workspaces, you can go on the preview, you can click here on the keyword, metadata, you can find everything about your image before you're going to retouch it, if you're even allowed to touch it, right? Touch it, retouch it, yeah, that sounds cool. And you can also double click and open it. This is a Photoshop file. In this Photoshop file, I'm gonna zoom into it. It has two layers here, and they are absolutely identical. I wanna go to my layers panel for a minute and expand it for a second to see what I have. So I can see I have one layer and another one says model. I'm gonna turn off the top layer and I'm just gonna go into the layer that says model. Do you see that? Let's say in the job you need to make it smaller or even for the retouching job and you need to make it bigger and you need to make it. How many times people change their mind? all the time when you work, right? Make it bigger, make it smaller. Make it bigger, make it smaller. One rule already, make it a lot bigger than an original. Doesn't matter if it's a smart object or not, not a good thing. Because Photoshop is a pixel-based software, has a tendency to be pixelated, it's not gonna look so good. If a little bit bigger, nobody's gonna see, but if somebody wants it to put it, let's say, in a Hollywood ball on a big screen and really kind of like go in and make it huge, you're going to see pixelation. So Photoshop is resolution dependent software, so you have to be really careful. But let's make it smaller. So the shortcut for it is Command T or go edit and free transform. And look what I get here. You see a bounding box, right? I can hold on the shift key and I'm gonna go to the side, I'm gonna make it a little smaller. Do you see, I don't commit to it yet. What does it mean? I didn't make a decision if I wanna make it this size. So if you make it a little bigger, a little smaller and did not hit enter or return to commit to it, you're still okay. But as soon as I click enter or return, Basically, I committed to the size. Just because you went and resized it, if you wanna make it a little bigger to where the original, it doesn't mean that Photoshop is gonna bring you back the pixels. Not if it's a regular layer. So let's go to, again, edit, free transform. And now I'm gonna hold on the shift key and make it a little bit bigger. Do you see a little pixelation? Do you see it start degrading the image? And if I release, do enter or return, do you see how face is fuzzy? That's not a good thing. If you needed to retouch her to a magazine and make her a little different size, this is not gonna hold. That's right away, somebody's gonna call you and say the image is not looking clear. It's not clear enough. Let's look again now at the other one next to it. It's still looking okay, and it's really clear. So before Photoshop start with, started with smart object, basically what people did, like me, like if I had to retouch it, I would duplicate the layer, I would start making the other one smaller, bigger, smaller, bigger, smaller, bigger, and when a client says this is the size, I will trash the fuzzy one, go back to the original and make the right size. So first I'm gonna measure it and do all, okay. So that was a lot of work because if they change your mind again, you have to duplicate a lot of layers and go back and you did not have something called like reverse engineering. How was it before, right? So now let's look at smart object. You see the layer name, I called it convert to smart object. You can right click or go back here to your uh, layers panel and say convert to smart object from here, from your layer panel. You can also go to layer, smart object, convert to smart object. Do you see that? And I want you right away to see how the layer looks. What do you see? Do you see it's a different symbol? 
has a symbol that looks like a file within a file. Why is that? Because yes, it is. What happened behind the scene with smart object, you don't even know it, it takes more memory. But this file or layer is connected to the original. What does it mean? I want you to double click on the symbol of the smart object. You probably have a dialog box that telling you a story. Say, okay, it's basically telling you that you have, it's gonna open in another screen and when every change that you're gonna do, it is going to go back to it. So look what it is. This layer that you saw, it's connected to this one the whole time, okay? So now I am going to go back to my real image. And then I am going to edit and free transform. Look, first of all, look at the bounding box. Is it looking different a little bit? They look like vector bounding boxes. So it's already giving you a clue. I am something different. Now go in, hold on the shift key to maintain the aspect ratio and make it really small and return. Now I'm gonna do Command T and make it back to the original. Do you see any change in the pixelation? Or she looks pretty good. Why is she looking pretty good? Because she's a smart object. So even if I am making her so tiny now, right, like this, and I'm gonna double click on the smart object symbol. Look what she connected to. She's connected to this little thing. Does that make sense? Behind the scene. And that's why it takes more memory because whenever you use that, you basically have other layers behind the scene, but it's always gonna say, you maintain these pixels. Does that make sense? It tells you that's it. So if it's bigger a little bit than the original, that's when you're gonna see pixelation. Does that make sense? So I can go back to my original, do Command T, go back here, make her bigger. See, if I make it a lot bigger, you're gonna start seeing a little pixelation, but if I make it to the original, she's looking good. So you're gonna ask me, so why people don't use that all the time? A, it's memory B, there's some things do not work with smart objects. What does it mean? Click on the letter B on your keyboard. That will take you to the brush. Just go in with the brush and try to draw on it. And what do you see? The no enter sign, not, not working. Why not? Because it belongs to the original, you cannot draw on a smart object. Go in, let's say, to um, this one, the smoosh tool, or whatever you call it. Um, I was, okay, you know what? I don't have all my stuff. <laughs> go back here to the drawing tool, the sponge, the burn, the sponge tool. If I go to any of the drawing tool, I can do that. I'm going to go back to the blur, sharpen, and smudge. Doesn't work. And then if I click, it's going to ask you, you need to rasterize it in order to draw on it. What does it mean, rasterize? Rasterize is making it to a normal layer, and it no longer has the connection to the smart object. Why am I showing you, and why is it so important? Because when I am working with retouching, I end up doing a lot of stuff as smart object and smart filters, which are the same idea, because I want to have a reverse engineering. I want to go backwards and see what's going on. And the smart object will enable me to do that again and again. Let's just, I'm not going to rasterize it. The only time I rasterize it, if I do a copy of it, or somebody really send me the stuff, sometimes you need to rasterize it. But look what I'm doing. I'm going to double click again on the smart object. I have her over here. Let's say I do want to smear her face a little bit. So the first thing I'm gonna do is not doing it on the original here. So I'm gonna go into the flyout menu and say duplicate layer or command J, which will be your shortcut. 
and then I can call this one retouched. I can turn off the, yes. Um, when I get, when I double click on smart object, this comes up. Okay, you click OK, and that's great that you showed me, but you have to actually not to go and click here in the area that it says, you have to click inside the symbol. You see the symbol, smart object thumbnail. And if you right click, I mean, you see here this one. And that's when you click on. Not on the area, not on the word. Is it? Yeah, no, it's still. Is it a smart object? Yeah. You first have to convert it to smart object? Yes. Okay, it's not a smart object yet. You have to go to layer, smart object. Convert to smart object. Now double click on it. And now it's going to tell you click OK, and that's it. So I wrote, I named it smart object because I wanted you to convert it, but you ha you have to convert it first. Okay. okay. So look what I'm doing now. I'm in the area, and I can go and draw directly on this one. Why? Because this one is not a smart object anymore. And I'm going to go to my blur tool or the smudge tool. And look what I'm doing. I'm just smudging a face a little bit. Just going in and doing something, making a first really blurry. Do you see that? If I zoom into it, look at this. I messed up the face a little bit, right? All what you need to do now is do one save with the same name, Command S, not save as. Go back to the original and look what happened. Do you see what happened to her? What do you see here? One layer only. If you double click again, you can go back. So I, if I don't like it, I can turn that on, off, turn this one on. What if I wanted to go to the good one and make a duplication of the current layer? I'm going to click on the move tool. If you click on the letter M, it will take you to the Layers Move tool. Hold on your Option key and just do a nice little copy. So I have two models here. And now do a Save, Command S. And go back to your original. What do you have there? The two of them are there. How many layers do you have there? It looks like one layer, but it's a smart layer. So you're going to say, so what happened if I close the other one and I go home and I save my file? Can I still click on it? Yes. It is going to be a smart object for the rest of your life until you are going to go in to smart object and you're going to rasterize it. If you rasterize it, guess what I just did? I have this layer and this layer is there together and that's it which I'll never do that because now I can separate them. And this one is not good, so I have to bring the new one. Does that make sense? So when you are retouching, and we're going to use a lot of tools, a lot of time I combine it and I do a before and after. Does that make sense? So let's go in now, close this one. And then let's go in and open the other files. I can go in again to file and browse and bridge. If I do have the shortcut all the way, I can go in and look at the one that I want to work with. And we're going to work first with landscape. And purposely, what is this untitled folder? There's nothing in there. I just made a folder. I don't want to have it. So move it to trash. Okay. You see here, I have a bunch of images. And purposely, I brought this image that says Venice because I'm going to show you a few tricks to work on retouching. And on this one, it's not going to work so perfect. So I want to show you that it doesn't work on every image. This is where I'm coming from. Everything you hear about Photoshop, and it's an amazing program, there's always going to be a situation that A, it's not going to work. B, it's not going to look good. C, it's going to take you a long time to do it. 
you see if you go to an Adobe demo one time, like to a conference, everything looks beautiful. Why? They're using their demo file that they worked on for like two years. Of course it's going to work. So that's why I shot a picture in a cafe in Venice and I wanna show you also how to retouch that. So the first thing we're gonna look at, we are going to go in and double click on the waterfall. And look what I have here. I have an area with a waterfall. I'm about to do a project. I love this image. Maybe I found it, maybe I took it. And all of a sudden I say to myself, I don't really wanna have this backpack there. So there's a lot of ways to retouch it. One of them, of course, is your stamp tool. We're gonna to look at that too. But there's other kind of immediate advanced ones that we're gonna work with. I always duplicate my original, always. Because the way it works now, it will go, you don't wanna kill the, cause maybe you do want the backpack for something. So how do I do that? I'm gonna duplicate my layer. Easy way is to go to the flyout menu of the layers panel and say duplicate layer, or even easier to write down the shortcut, Command J. Command J will duplicate a layer and will make a layer from a selection. One of your best friends, because that's what you do. So I'm gonna do Command J and look what happened. It says layer one. Now I'm gonna name layer one, I'm double click on the word layer one, and I'm gonna call it retouched. And then we are going to go to the first one, which called content aware. I'm going to just go to one of my selection tool. The easiest one is basically go now to the lasso tool. If you click on the letter L, do you see the lasso tool? I am going to zoom into it. Easy way to zoom in with the shortcut is Command Plus and you zoom in. Or of course you can go to View and zoom in and zoom out. And in this workspace we also have a navigator. But look what I'm doing. I'm gonna go around, click and do, I'm gonna go and mark around this little bag. But look what I'm doing. It's not a perfect selection on purpose. Do you see that? It is leaving for me some breathing area to show what else I have outside of the backpack. Do you see that? Purposely, it's not tight on it. Now you want to go to edit. I'm going to go back to the area there. I'm going to go to edit and fill. A dialog box is going to show up here. I am not going to click OK yet because it's asking me questions. What to fill in with this area? With what? You can fill it with a foreground color, with a background color. But if you click inside, you have a place that says content aware. Do you see that? This one is gonna be grayed out if you don't have a selection on the screen. Does that make sense? So if you go, yeah. Yeah. Edit and fill. And then I'm gonna go back here and now it's okay. If it's grayed out, it means that you do not have a selection. I'm gonna click on content aware and look what it's asking me. What do you wanna do it in a normal mode? It's all good. And it's also asking you, do you want the color adaptation or not? You're not gonna see any difference in the beginning and there's not a preview, so we have to go back and forth. And I'm gonna click okay. And you can see here, because I did something maybe too big, you see, I got an area, and if I'm deselecting and zooming into it, look what I got there. The backpack disappeared. Is that a perfect one? Maybe not, because some of the areas around there were fuzzy a little bit. 
but now you can redo that and I can see the before and after I can go around this area and look what I'm doing I'm doing another marquee and I'm gonna do edit fill and this time I'm gonna try without color adaptation and I'm gonna click OK and deselect and now I'm gonna look at it a little bit and I can see it's starting to look a little bit better for me and I can go back and forth and say I want to go into this area and go to the fill and you're gonna tell me every time to go to edit fill that's a job yes it is and if you're retouching somebody might stand behind you or you want to do it fast a very easy shortcut to go to the fill dialog box is hold on the shift key and the delete shift delete takes you to the fill area shift delete let me know if it works so I use that all the time and look what I'm doing now I'm gonna play over here and I'm gonna click on that and click OK and it's a little bit better and I'm deselecting so life is a little bit better but you're gonna tell me it's not perfect which could be a lot of time so there is another tool that basically gonna make content aware a lot better so and then you can play between the two of them and then we're gonna also look at the other tools that you can work with what's the other tool I'm gonna zoom into it I am going to go, I can just select it if I want with a regular marquee here, or I can go to some of my retouching tools. And I have a retouching area, and if you click on the letter J, not command J, it takes you to the healing brush, the healing brush tool, the patch tool, the content aware move, and the red eye which by the way, I never use in Photoshop because it's basically simple and not really working perfect. I want you to go to patch tool. Do you see that? The patch tool has a content aware tool in it. So instead of just going in and doing a selection around the fuzzy area, I'm just gonna go around a small area And then I'm going all the way up to the control and you can see it says patch is normal right now. You want to make sure you tell it to be a content aware patch. Do you see that? All the way up. I want to make sure you see it because by default it might be a normal mode. You want it to be in content aware. There's also a structure for it and the color will deal with it in a minute. I just wanted you to let me know if you see that. Yes? No. Okay. Uh, you probably, okay, click on this little dot here. Click inside and say edit tools and go in and say restore default and click done. Okay. And now it's going to So I'm going to go and look what I'm doing with the content aware tool. I can click on it. Do you see the arrows? I can go in, 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 and I can tell the machine what do I want to put in there. So the regular content aware, it does it completely crazy together. You don't really know exactly. This one, you're going to tell it what do you want to go in there. Does that make sense? Maybe I want this one to be there. Maybe I want this one to be there. You decide. And you see, I clicked here, and if it looks okay for me, I'm okay. But while I'm still in a selection, I can say I want to change the structure a little bit. So it's going to make it a little different. I can also go in and play with the color adaptation. As long as it's still selected. As soon as it's still selected, as soon as you deselect, you get out of it. But look what I have here. Now it looks a little bit better. 
So basically, what's the difference between content aware and content aware patch? Patch will tell you what goes in there. The other one is random. Sometimes we'll do perfect stuff and sometimes horrible stuff, right? So I can go back here to this one and I wanna go and get these guys in there and see, look what happened now. That's not a good thing. Look what happened on mine. So, cause my color is eight, maybe I wanna have the color maybe to two and maybe the structure, I want it to be a little bit better and you see what happens? Now my content aware is a little bit different and then I can deselect and it looks a little bit different. Does that make sense? So you can always go back and forth and go with either one of them and change the stuff that you have. Does that make sense? And then you can see the before and the after. Do you see that? So let's go and open another one. I'm gonna go to File, Browse and Bridge. And then I am going to go to Content Aware PSD, this one. And then I am going to zoom in to this scenario. This is a little bit different because sometimes Content Aware doesn't like when you do big selections. Look at this one. If I'm gonna do for the whole thing content aware, it might do different things because you have hair, head is on a white background. Part of a face is on a gray background. Part of a shirt is on a green, brown. And then her dress is over here. So I might go in here and do it by sections. Does that make sense? So what I'm trying to show, it's not always one, two, three. It's gonna be one, two, three. If you want to do an immediate one just to show, let's say you location scouting for an article that you're going to do and you want to take a lot of pictures and right away tell the person, these guys are not going to be there. I just took them out. So you do it fast. But later on, you want to eliminate them in a better way. Does that make sense? So here I'm going to zoom in and do it a little different. I might even go in to my lasso tool and look what I'm doing. I'm just gonna go around her hair and do shift delete and click OK. The color adaptation was not a good thing for me here. So I'm gonna do a shift delete again, maybe not color adaptation. And it still doesn't do a good job. Do you see on mine? It just gave her a weird little head there. So I'm going to my patch tool and say, I want to fill it with this, or I want to fill it with that, and it's still not perfect. But I found a place here, and that's better. And deselect. And then I might go back to this area, and go in here, and go in here, and see, I'm almost getting rid of her upper head. Now I'm gonna go in just to the area with her hair. And then I might go back here and do like a content aware. So you see what happens? I'm starting eliminating her. I might go back to this area and try my luck with shift delete. And it's starting to be okay, that's okay. But you see what he did here? So this is the stuff you have to look for. So I might go back to this area and move it around. So you see what I'm doing? I'm using the two of them. I might go in to just the dress, shift delete, and hopefully that's gonna be okay. Got rid of her. Now I have to deal with these guys. So maybe I'm gonna put stuff here. And I want you to try because sometimes it will take a while until you get the real result that you wanna get. Does that make sense? It's not an immediate. And then I can go into the color. I can go into the structure. And deselect. 
and then I might go in and decide that I want to have some grass in here and maybe this entire area is going to be a little grass and maybe this area is going to be some grass so all of a sudden I eliminate yes so when you're using the patch tool you draw the line yeah I can draw the line too yeah Yes, like let's say I did that, I can move it to whatever I want. And then you double click it and it No, just deselect. Oh. I mean, go, not deselect it, just release. Okay. When I release, if I don't like that, look at this one, right? I don't like it so much. That's when I go before I deselect to the structure and try to make it a little bit better if I can. And maybe change a little bit the structure for the color. And if it's more or less what I want, that's when I deselect. So now you can see here, I have that, and it's all good. But guess what I forgot to do? I forgot to duplicate my layer, so I don't see the before and after. Not a good thing, but I did that, right? So it's kind of, I can go back to my history panel, I can show you a little trick. What if I forgot that? I can go back to window and bring back my history panel. And look what I have. Hopefully I didn't do too many histories. If I did too many, I don't have it. But you see I have the original here. And if I have my original here, I have that. So all what I'm going to do while I'm on my history, do select all, edit, and copy. Right? I edit the original. Now I'm going back to my history. Oh, I think I lost my other stuff that I had there because my history was nonlinear. Oops. I don't think it's going to do it now. Yeah, I, I should have gone because I exceeded my history. But basically, I could have pasted that and then I can go back here and put the stuff in there and then I will have my original. Does that make sense? So but anyway, I'm going to duplicate it. And then we know about that. This one here, that's going to be an easy one. Why is it an easy one? Because that's a simple one. Shift delete and deselect. But let's say you want to do stuff with her. And then for the sake of our retouching, somebody told you we don't want to have a layer, but I want to move this girl to the other side and put her somewhere else. There is a situation that you can move a person and heal it with it. How do you do that? I want you to go into your lasso tool and just select her around. Not a big selection, but you want to have some of the grass there. While she's selected, let me know if you selected her. Let's go to the healing tools and let's go to a place that says content aware move. Do you see that? It's together with the healing, the healing brush, the patch, and the content aware, do you see that? Now, I am going to make sure in the mode all the way up, it says move. Because there's another one that says extend. I'm clicking on her and I'm moving her. So I'm telling the machine move here, do you see that? If you click all the way up on the check mark and say, okay, look what happened. She moved and she disappeared from where she was. If you don't like the way this area here, you can go to the structure and change that a little bit. You can go into the color and change that. Does that make sense? So what did I do in this one? I moved her and I healed the other area that I have. It doesn't create another layer. It will be flat there, but I am healing the other area that I have. And if I deselect, look at the before and after. 
Do you see that? So that's another way of doing it with a landscape. But I want to show you when it doesn't work. And then we're going to go to portrait and do the other tools on the portrait. If you go to file and browse and bridge and go back to the Venice, this one doesn't have very, doesn't have straight line, doesn't have a landscape. That I have all kind of stuff. So that's when content aware is not perfect. You have to be very careful. Because if I am going to, let's say, the coffee area, and I am going to marquee and even select it something like that and do shift delete. You see what it does? It starts to do some other stuff there. And then if I'm going to start doing kind of a small one and even go to the patch, it's going to hard to find an area because these guys do not read exactly perspective. So I can fake it, but that's going to take a longer time. Does that make sense? So you can see the stuff when you have, when is it going to work for you and when is not, and you're the one who's going to be like I call it the boss of it, right? You decide which one gonna work and which one not, okay? And we can continue that, but I'm going to file and close all. And I'm going to file and browse and bridge. And then I'm going one back and I'm going to the headshots. And I have a series of headshots over here. And maybe I wanna go and do some stuff there. So let's click on this one. And I'm going to zoom in and see, first of all, what's going on. So what happened a lot of time when you do stuff? Some of the techniques will be that, first of all, you duplicate, no matter what you duplicate it, right? So you do Command J to duplicate. And then say retouched. Well, not retouch, but that's a dupe. Another thing is you want to go to the flyout menu and say new layer. And going to call it directions. And what does it mean directions? Sometimes you'll get a file like this and you don't know what the client wants or you or yourself, right? Because maybe that's your headshot and you want to put it for your portfolio. I'm going to my brush tool. I'm going to go all the way up to my control and click on the brush that says 2B pencil. Do you see that? And then I am going to double click on the foreground color and just going to go to red. And all what I'm doing is doing little red marks to myself. Do you see? And you can do your own. Or you can even say this one with a question mark, shall I do it or not? I'm going to go around and say I want to eliminate that. I want to maybe eliminate this extra hole here. It's not going to do great. I'm going to go back here and say, do I want to go and do some wrinkles or not? And if I want to go back here and just do all kind of stuff here, maybe I want to play that or maybe I'm going to save and open. Just giving me a little direction. This stuff you're going to eliminate later. You can decide, do I want to make the lips a little bit? All kind of stuff that we're going to do now. We're going to do different kind of techniques. And we're going to name them with the name of the technique. And then we're going to do from some, then we're going to do a smart object. And then we're going to do a before and after. Does that make sense? Again, sometimes it will work perfect and sometimes not. I have one advantage of you guys. It's this one. It's the it's my Wacom tablet. It's so much easier to retouch with that because I might use some brushes and with the brushes, it's gonna look a little bit different. We might do some retouching to her and a different retouching to another one in different kind of tools. Does that make sense? 
I can go back and forth. If I know what I'm doing, I can even turn off more or less, but that could be on and off later on. I'm going to be on very touched now. First of all, I don't want it to move, so I'm locking the ability to move it. So it's aligned exactly on top of the background. It's aligned right now. And now I'm going to some of my healing tools. The first one we're going to look at is the spot healing brush tool. Do you see that? It's the top one. It looks like a bandage and a little spot next to it. Do you see it? Now I am going to go in. I don't want to, I don't know why this one stay there, but whatever it is. I'm going to go back here and I am going, I want to go in this tool. What does it do? It's called the spot healing tool. So what is it going to? It's going to spots and it heals. What does it mean? It's different than the uh, clone tool. Clone tool duplicates exactly. This one will take it and heal it, good or bad. We don't want to do it directly on our screen. So what are we going to do? We are going to go and open a new layer. So we're going to say new layer. And I am going to call that healing spot. Spot brush or brush healing, whatever tool. So you know which one I used it with. Before I'm using it, this tool has an insight content aware tool. You see here, it comes with a content aware. You also create texture, which I don't need to, but you see this one, it's important. Do you see what it says here? Sample all layers. If you do not click on it, you can click and click on the screen. It's nothing going to happen. Because basically, you want to sample what's underneath and you want it to be to the empty layer. So click on sample all layer. Another thing that you have, you have different modes. You have a replace mode, you have multiply mode, all kind. Well, now I'm going to do a normal mode. And this is the original size. It came on mine, it was 19. I can click inside and I can change the size. I can change the hardness of the brush. So it's very soft or very hard. It's up to me. I can change the spacing. I can change all kind of stuff here. And you see, I'm working with pen pressure. If you want to make the brush bigger without going all the way up there, Go to your keyboard. Do you see the brackets next to the letter P? The right bracket's gonna make the brush bigger. The left bracket's gonna make the brush smaller. So I'm zooming into it a little bit and you see next to her eyebrow, there's a little kind of dot there. I wanna eliminate it, so I'm gonna click. See, it's gone. I'm gonna click on another one. I'm gonna click on another one. You have to be really careful though, not to do stuff like that. Cause that's gonna create a line. See, I just did that. I'm not gonna do that. Con control Z, Command Z. I can go back and I can make that a little harder. And then I am going to here next to see, I'm gonna go to little dots that I don't like and basically clicking on them to eliminate just the tiny little dots. And then when you do it for a little while, what I want you to do is go to before and after. And if you turn off everything, basically this is what I did. Do you see what I have there? That's the dots. This is the reason I'm doing it on a different layer. Why? Because maybe I want to do it, but I don't want to do it so harsh. I can take this layer and change the opacity. I can eliminate some stuff from there. I can even erase some of these dots now if I didn't like the stuff that I made. Does that make sense? So I always do it to a different layer because if I did it directly to 
the layer itself and not on an empty layer, I won't be able to go in and change the stuff that I have. And I'm gonna go in in a different area and here and see if I want. And just this one and maybe I'm even gonna go. But look at that. Next to our ear here, I have this little hole. So I'm not gonna click with this brush. I'm gonna make the brush a little bit smaller and I'm just gonna go and eliminate that. And I can continue and continue and continue. Now you're gonna tell me, okay, it looks pretty good, but you don't like some of the things here and you don't like some of the dark area here. So maybe the makeup wasn't so good or something not was so perfect. Maybe we wanna eliminate that. This one I will eliminate with another tool. I will also open an empty layer and I might make each side with a different layer because I don't want to put all my eggs in the same basket in case I make mistakes, right? So I am going to open a new layer and I'm going to call it Healing Brush. Not healing spot, healing brush. And I'm going to my retouching tool and I'm going to go not to the spot, to the healing brush. Here, you have few things. You see all the way up, it says current layer. That will do nothing. Current layer and below. So you're gonna take the healing brush spot that I did if I need or all layers, so I can make a decision how I want to do it. I'm going to put all layer. And let's say I'm going to click one time on the screen, and I did it on purpose, because look what you have. They're giving you a message that says, option click to define a source point to be used to repair the image. So this one is more, kind of like a little more advanced, and it's geared for bigger areas and not just spots. And there's two ways to see what you do. I'm gonna make the brush a little bigger. Not that big. And let's say I'm gonna zoom in to this area. And I decide that this one, it's a clean area. I'm going to option click on this area and I'm going to go into this area to repair. And you see while I'm doing it, I want you to see my cursor. Where did my cursor stay? In the same area. Do you see that? It stays in the same area. See the cursor? It stays kind of like, let's see if I can work with my little thing. See, this This is the cursor. It stayed in the same area. Why is it here? Because I didn't turn the aligned. If I click on the align and option click and go in and start repairing, look at the cursor. It's following me. Do you see that? And keep repairing. The way I do it, I basically ignore it. I keep sampling because it's not one color here. So I will do option click here and option click here. And then I'm gonna start clicking and clicking the area here to, see I'm option clicking. And then I'm gonna go in and option click. So look what this one does. It will take the area and it also align it to the colors that you have. So now I'm continuing option click because maybe it's too white around there. And then I can do the before and after. Does that make sense? So I'm starting maybe to see something that's a little bit better. Do you see here? I don't have the wrinkles so much. It's still kind of dark to my taste. So I might go back here and 
go in again and option click and sample the area and go back and forth and play with the selection. If I want to do the other side, I might open another layer. Why? Because I'm going to turn left eye, right eye, and all kind of stuff like that because I want to be really careful for what I have. So let's say if you needed to do, let's say, the smile wrinkle, that's something I will take it not maybe clean all the way because maybe they are representing kind of a personality so you don't want her to look like a porcelain doll you need to have something that brings in some personality but i'm going to do another uh, layer and i'm going to call it left eye and then i'm going to do again option click And if you guys, anybody using Windows here? If you, if you use ever use Windows, it's Control, I mean, Alt Click. Do you see, I mean, this eye maybe wasn't so hard, but look at what I did. I just go, went in and played with that. And I have other areas that I can go in and play with. Does that make sense? One thing to understand though, when you're working with the healing brushes, they don't like a very harsh color change. What does it mean? I'm going to zoom into that. Let's say this one irritates me. You see this little dot here. And then I want to fix it a little bit. If I'm going to option and click, I might get a smear like this, which I don't want. So what I'm doing is going to my regular lasso tool and just going around it. I can even go to select and modify and maybe feather it a little bit. But now I know that nothing is going to leak to the other side. And then I'm free to do option, click, and I'm going to go and change it here. You see, it's going to be here. And it doesn't leak to the area. And then I'm going to deselect, and you see I did a good job. So you have to be careful when you have areas that has two different kind of colors, like black or white, a thing like this. Does that make sense? Let's do something fun with it, and then we're gonna do another one, and we'll do another kind of retouching. Let's pretend she's okay. Now I wanna just open her eyes. So I am going to the retouched area, and then I am going to go in and make that into a smart filter or a smart object. How do you do that? I'm gonna go either to filter and convert to smart filter or go to layer and convert it to a smart layer. It's the same idea. And now I am going to go to a filter that best to work with smart filters or smart object and you go to filter and you're gonna go into the place that says liquify do you see that do you see it says vanishing point that it's grayed out that's a filter that's not compatible to a smart object go to liquify it will take you to a dialogue box you just in the liquify land right now Everything you're going to do here is within this screen. All the way to the side here, these are the liquify tools. You have the one that's going to warp things that I use it a lot. You have to reconstruct warp. What does it mean? If I'm, let's say, warping her nose like this, if I'm going to reconstruct it, it's just going to go in here, and it's just going to go back and reconstruct the one that I did. 
takes a moment, but it goes in and reconstructs it back to the normal one that I have. Then you have the other one over here that's going to go smooth. And then you have the crazy one that I don't use that for um, uh, retouching. I use it more for like, twirling images and things like this. Then you have a mask that you can freeze an area and do it just to the area that you want. Then you have a mask that you can unmask it. And then you have a new thing that calls face tool. Do you see that? Click on the face tool. Zoom in to the girl's eyes. And look what you have over here. They have brush density if you need to, but look what you have here. It says face one, do you see that? And then right now what I have here with the face tool, I can go in, let's say to the eye, and look what I can do. Do you see what I'm doing now? I'm moving just the eye. You can also go in and go to the size of the eye. Look at the eye, do you see that? Very tiny and very big. You see this one? So making the eyes, maybe you wanna make it kind of like more or less identical to the end. Then the heights of the eyes. And watch your screen while you're doing it. Then how wide are your eyes? You don't wanna do it too wide cause that's gonna be like crazy, but you see here. And then I'm tilting it a little bit, see? And then tilting here, and then the distance. You don't wanna have her cross-eyed, but maybe you wanna have it like this, or maybe leave it in the area that you have, right? Then you have the nose. You wanna put it all a little up. Do you wanna make it a tiny nose? Do you wanna make it a wide nose? Whatever you have, you can decide. And the same thing, do you want her to smile? And you want the lips gonna be a little up. And then you can go back here and play with the width of the mouth, see here? You have to be careful because some stuff you have to go back later and change. And the forehead and the chin. You wanna give her some jawline and the face, not like that. You wanna make like this, you know, you have to find a sweet spot. Now I clicked okay. I made her look a little different, right? So maybe I like it, maybe I don't, right? But what I can do here, because it's a smart object, first of all, look what I can do. I can say, you know what, this liquefied did not work for me. I turn it off. Or I can just double click on the word liquefy. It will take me back to the area that I have. And then I can go back and maybe start going to, and then reset. And reset took it to a normal mode. And now she looks okay. Does that make sense? What if I don't want to do the face? I just want to do a minor thing with the eye or minor thing with the nose without using the face tool. I can go to my mask and look what I'm doing. I'm masking areas that I don't want to move. So I don't want this one to move and I don't want this one to move. And then I'm going to go back to the pull forward tool and I can just go in and do that with my forward tool. But it doesn't touch the areas that I didn't do. Does that make sense? And then I can go into before and after and then click again and play with that. I can also go back and if I don't want to see the pins, I don't have to. I don't have to see the mask and now I can see just what I did to her nose by myself. If I want to go in again, I can go back here with the mask and then I can go also to this area. And then I'm going to go to the area and I'm going to take away this one. And now maybe I'm gonna pull out her lips manually. So you can do some manual stuff there without, and if I click okay, 
this is what I have here now so maybe she looks a little bit better on and off on and off do you see what I mean so I'm using the liquify either with everything or one by one does that make sense any questions about that so now I'm gonna go do another one I'm gonna do file browse and bridge and then actually I'm going to go to this area this one it's a face but there's a lot of stuff maybe that I don't want and a lot of stuff that I want to eliminate from this area I can also go in and use the clone tool and I'm gonna tell you when I'm using the clone tool I'm gonna zoom in and then I'm gonna this way I want to really eliminate it so maybe I would use the clone tool I can try content aware either or so I'm gonna duplicate and on the duplication I am going to go in to select the area and then I'm gonna do shift delete and then maybe content aware that was perfect and then I'm gonna go back to this area and do content aware and that was perfect see not that perfect though because you just didn't want to do the rest of the stuff so I might go to my patch tool and maybe try to put this one in there and you see it still didn't do it so I might go back to this area and try to do something like this and hopefully it is going to work but you see all the way down it still creates some problem for me it doesn't want the whole thing so if I want to do the patch tool here I'm going to open a new layer I'm going another patch tool the clone I'm going to go to the clone stamp tool I'm going to make the brush a little bigger again the same thing current layer and below I can do align or non align and basically here I'm clicking and look what I'm doing it was basically really copying exactly part of the wall it doesn't heal it it will copy exactly so usually my technique in this stuff is first I copy parts and then I'm gonna go heal it with the healing tool to give it some textures does that make sense that's the difference between a clone and a healing tool look what a clone tool will do if I click on an eye and bring it here guess what I can do it really clones it and you always want to clone it to a different layer so you can go in and adjust it so you see I'm doing not the perfect job now guess what I'm going to do now I'm going to go into the same layer and go to my healing brush and option click and start healing so I can get the color that I want and I can go in and make sure that I don't have all kind of spots there does that make sense yeah it, it just takes duplication so make sure to, can I see that yeah. um, make sure you hold on the option and then you have um, this one is selected current layer and below yeah make sure which one is the clone tool uh, that's the heal that's the healing okay so okay so the layer and below or all layers and you option click and then go and heal it on the other one 
but just uh, my you want to option click it from here and this is not good ah. for the, yeah that because it was so harsh and big first I cloned it and then I'm gonna heal it because the healing just takes it and makes it kind of like make the colors a little bit better but that's it does that make sense yes because you don't want it to be on the same layer and you want to make sure you are achieving something that's non-destructive does that make sense so now if i'm going to zoom in i mean other things that i want to clean maybe i want to clean some stuff here maybe i want to clean stuff on her face again and things like this these guys i can go ahead and play with the other tools that I have and go back and start. So I can go back here and go into my spot tool and then go back here and clean just the area that is the spot. And then I can go in and select the other stuff that I have. Does that make sense? But if I go back into this one, right? Let's pretend this is the one I really wanted. The nose is not looking good. So I might go back and du double click on the liquify. And then I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna go and reconstruct the horrible nose that I just made. So now the nose looking okay, but the, f the lips I'm okay with. Do you see I still have the liquify on and off? I still have the, the lips, but the nose looking okay. But what if I wanted to show it to somebody now? And then I'm going to do the before and the after. So I'm going to select the retouch and go in. I don't need the direction because I followed all the direction already. I'm going to hold on the shift key and select the retouch, the healing spot, the other healing spot and the left eye. And then I'm going to layer smart object convert to smart object. Do you see that? And it says left eye because it's always going to take the last layer. So I'm going to double click and call it retouched. Now I want to show the before and after. So we can do a few tricks. One of them is basically turning on again the background, go to the background layer, go to image, canvas size. Go back here and go back to percent and go into the left side of the image and then you're going to go in and go in and enlarge that. And you don't want to enlarge anything in the height, but just going to enlarge the width. So we're going to go in at 200% and the height is going to leave the 100%. That's the same. So look what happens. This is the canvas and it's extended. Now I'm going to go into the retouch, go to my move tool and click on that and move it over here. And now I can see the before and after one next to each other. And you can see the changes and decide which one would you like to use. Does that make sense? 
So I kind of enlarge the canvas. Does that make sense? Yes. I'm going to go into the background and I'm going to go to image canvas size. Instead of the pixels, I can calculate the pixels, but if I don't want to calculate, I'm going to go into the percent and I'm going to leave the height and I'm going to go into the side. So see, this is the center, so it's going to go all over. I'm going to go to the left. This one stays the same. And I'm going to set the width is going to be 200%. What? How did you move the... Oh, how do I move the other one? I'm going to go into image and canvas size. Okay, we That's the default. Yeah, you can go from here, from here, from here, from here. You see that? So I wanted the right side to grow. So I'm going to go in percent and the width is going to be 200. And now I'm going to go to the retouch and move that. Does that make sense? And now I can do file and save as. What am I gaining here because it's smart object? I can always go and double click on the retouch smart object. And look what happens. Do you see that? It's still layers. So I can decide that I don't want to have the healing spot. Or I'm going to go and decide that I want to change some other stuff there now. Whatever. Let's say I'm going to go to liquify. And then I am going to go in and I'm going to make her eyes a little bit higher. And then wider. And I'm tilting them a little bit. i am just made it kind of like this. Do you see she's cross-eyed a little bit? If I do Command S. And then I'm going to go back here. Right away, it's adjusted it. Do you see that? And that's the power of the smart object. That's why you want to go in and do stuff with smart object back and forth. The same thing for the healing. Why? Because if uh, you don't do stuff like this, you cannot go back. I'm going to show you an easier way to work with. Sorry again. Yeah. I did, okay, I, I got it, but now I got the picture and it's white. How can I put the other one? Oh. Right? You just go back here, this one, right? Let's say it was here. You click on the retouched smart object and you move it with the move tool. It says Do you have a smart object there, which is a layer? Just click on the move tool and move it. And that's going to move to the other side. Ah, so the same. Yeah, it's a layer. Okay. okay. I'm going to show you an easier trick. Let's say I'm going to this one. And let's pretend that we did a lot of the stuff here and she all good. I just did here the stuff and this is the layer and this is the one and this is another one. And maybe I changed some other stuff and did a lot of other things here. So look what I'm doing. I'm selecting layer one, holding down the shift key layer two, layer three, layer, smart object, convert to smart object. And I'm going to double click and I'm going to call that retouched. Instead of making my canvas bigger like I did before, I can show you another little trick. And this one is basically you move it and then enlarge the canvas. So you all have the retouched, right? Go to the move tool and click and start moving it and moving it, and move it until you don't see it. Don't be afraid. Do you see what happened? I'm moving the layer and you don't see the layer, right? Are you moving it? Now go to image menu bar and say reveal all. And look what happens. It will reveal the canvas. So I can even do it more and do image reveal all. So instead of making your canvas bigger and smaller before that, you just move the smart object and then reveal all. Does that make sense? That works only with smart objects. 
it worked with any layer, any layer, but you were just, it's great to work with smart object because you have a lot of elements there. It works also with groups. You can move the entire group. But in smart object, it's kind of condensed and it's there. This will work with everything. What does it mean? I'm gonna go file and browse and bridge. And let's say I'm going to go in to this one, right? I just wanted to have the two of them next to each other without doing anything yet. I'm gonna do Command J, duplicate, right? And all what I'm doing is moving the duplicate, see? And do image, reveal all. And now I can start doing it. Is that cool? And you can continue doing up and down in every area. So you can do four of her. And each time, retouch her with a different look. Does that make sense? And that's what we're gonna do now. We'll retouch her in different color. Because maybe for retouching, sometimes it's not just the little pimples, sometimes they want you to retouch colors, right? Sometimes they want you to change the color of something that you have. So you see what I have here? I have the original, which is the background. Now I have this one. And I'm gonna double click and I'm gonna call it phase two. What if I wanted this face to go up? Because I wanna have four of them. Look what I'm doing. I'm on phase two. I can enlarge the canvas, but what if I don't feel like it? I'm gonna hold on the option key, click and drag a copy. See, I'm moving it, moving it. I see the copy, you see already? And I'm putting it like here. And then it says phase two copy. I even can go in and say phase three. And then go image, reveal all. Do you see what I have? Now this one's gonna be a lot easier. Why? Because it's already the side, so I'm gonna hold on the option and just do that. So look what I have here. In two seconds, I can have three, four kind of faces, and now we're gonna adjust it with different adjustment layers. Because sometimes this is all what you're gonna need to do in retouching. Does that make sense? So don't you like this little reveal all? Not a lot of people know it exists even. Every time I show it to people that have been using Photoshop forever, they're like, that will save me a lot of time. Instead of calculating the size and moving it and bringing it, this one is like you do it as you go. Does that make sense? It's under image reveal all. That's what you want to remember. So look what I'm doing. Let's look if I want to change the colors. If I am going to my adjustment layers, and some of us worked with it already, right? What are adjustment layers? There are adjustments that will adjust certain things for the layer in different kind of groups. What does it mean and where are they? Under layer, you have the adjustment layer. You have fill layers that you can fill them with solid gradient and pattern, but you have the adjustments. And the adjustment will do brightness and contrast, levels, curves and exposure. Then it's gonna go to color looks. So vibrance, hue and saturation, balance, black and white. And then it's gonna do all kind of, maybe I call it like inverting and posterizing and fresh or more like of a technique. But most of the time what you really want to do is change the adjustments after you retouch even something. If you go to image and adjustment and go directly from here, this is a destructive command. You won't be able to go back to it and you're gonna have to duplicate your layer so many times and you're never gonna know what you did. So that's why you use adjustment layers. But let's see how they work. And this is why I have this kind of a file. I have four layers right now. I wanna change the adjustment for the entire thing. Because I don't like, I think everything looked kind of like too yellowish. I'm going to, I can go also to the adjustment all the way down here. And I might go into brightness and contrast for now. 
And I am going in here, and in the brightness and contrast, you have an auto contrast. And then you see now it's too bright maybe, or maybe you can start doing stuff. So look what I'm doing. What happens right now here? Everything changes, do you see that? Why is that? Because by default, whatever you put them, if they take all the layers, or maybe on top of three layers, they are global adjustments, okay? So let's say, I'm just gonna exaggerate, yes. Would you be able to adjust them individually? Yes, that's what, I, that's what I'm showing you, yeah. So let's say I did that, and then maybe in one face I wanted to show the client like this and the other is not, right? But I messed up everything, right? First of all, I can go back to my layers panel. And I can decide which one of them is gonna be with this one. So if I'm going to, let's say, first of all, I'm gonna go and put it on top of the background. I drag and drop it. Look at that. If I put it just on top of the background, see what happened? Just the background is that. Well, that's the easy part. And I can still double click on it, go to my property and say, you know what, I exaggerated, but I want it to be kind of something like this. But what if I want to go to phase two and make a wonderful change and I don't want it to do it to the background? Because now I have background is easy because it's always the one on top of it. There's nothing there. So look what I'm doing. There's two ways for you to do it. One way is to load the selection of your layer. How would you do that? Select, go to phase two, select, load selection. And the first dialog box is gonna say phase two transparency. What does it mean? The selection of this layer. Look what happened. This one is selected, so you know what's gonna happen now. Everything that I'm going to do is going to be just to that. But you're going to say, you know what, to go to select load selection, maybe I won't remember. I'm going to show you an easy way. Every time in Photoshop, and you want to write it down, you hold on your command key, and you click on a thumbnail of a layer, or a mask, or a path, or anything that it's kind of a layer, it will load the selection automatically. So I'm holding down the command key and look what I'm going to face to. What is the symbol that you see there? Do you see that dotted line around there? If you just do one click, one, loaded the selection. That's it. Now I can go to adjustment layer and let's say I'm gonna do levels now. And look what happens here. No matter what I'm going to do, even if I exaggerate, look what happened. I'm just doing that. Do you see what it happens? Only to this one. Why? Because it just did that. Does that make sense? So I'm going to make it a little nicer, of course. And let's say I'm going to go back here. And I'm going to do auto levels. And I'm going to change that a little bit. And change that a little bit. And it looks a lot better, right? What else can I do here though? Maybe you look at the hair. Maybe the hair doesn't look, maybe I lost some stuff on the hair. I can go back to the hair and try to bring it back. But what is this one? It's a mask. So I can go in and load the selection of the mask again. And I can go, let's say, to my gradient tool and click on the mask. And I can go back here and look what I'm doing. I'm going to go with black and white and look at this. Part of a face is dark and the hair is not so dark. Because this is what I did. I went in and I put a mask on her hair to play with the colors. Does that make sense? For that, you kind of need to know layer masking because that's really, really important. But I'm going to deselect. Now I'm going to go to phase three. 
I don't feel like loading the selection. Not in the mood or don't remember how. Could be, right? I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna say, I wanna go U in saturation and I'm gonna change the U and the saturation and I'm gonna go back here and play and look what happened. Do you see it happens to all of them? Why is that? I didn't load the selection. And so you went through everything. But why you do that, it's okay. Because you can take your option key and click in between them and tell it just go to the layer below. So you see I created a clipping. And now you know it just goes in here. Hold down the option key again. Oops. Off, off, on, off. Does that make sense? If you don't remember the shortcut, it's okay also. Because if you're gonna go to your properties panel and look what you have over here, while you're on it, you can go and clip it or unclip it. You see that? This is the symbol for it. So you have a chance here to do a global to everything, or you can go loading selection. I can even go now and just select an area. I can decide that on here, I'm just gonna go in and I'm just going to select this one and hold on the shift can select that. I just wanna make, I'm, I'm gonna make it a little bit better. Let's say I'm just gonna go in here and I just wanted to go in and just select and change the color of her eyes. Look what I'm doing. And hold down the shift key and do that. The rest I'm okay. And now I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna say you in saturation. And I'm gonna do maybe color eyes and maybe give her weird green eyes. Do you see that? So you see when it went? Only to her. If I hold on the shift key and turn off the little selection, she's all green. Do you see that? Does that make sense? Can I load the selection of it again? Yes, you can. This is what I did. I can go in and inverse this selection. Select, yes. because maybe I want to make her look weird. Halloween is coming, right? So I'm going to go in here and then you in saturation and then I'm going to colorize and now I'm going to make that look like that. So look what I have here. Why was I able to do that? Because I just went in here and colorized that and inverse that to the area. And now I'm going to go back here and then this one is going to go back here. And you see that? If I zoom in, look what I have. So I do have four layers and each one has a different kind of adjustment. So adjustment layers are really important for your retouching. Basically, you're gonna start your retouching with some adjustment layers because somebody gonna give you an image and tell you it doesn't look good to start with. Let's just go and fix first the look of the image and then go back from that and create some other stuff. So before we wrap up for Q&A, let's go to the last one. I'm going to go back here, let's go to this one. Maybe this is too, first of all, I mean, of course I'm going to go and see this is not a good image because whatever happened here, I mean, I might go and crop it, but maybe the first thing I want to do here is play with adjustments. So I might go in here and say, I always start from brightness and contrast, then go to levels, then go to curves. 
But another thing that I want to show you, because you already can play with adjustment layer and we have only a few minutes. What if I wanted to pretend that it was a camera raw image and I really in the dark room right now, I can go and make it into convert to smart filter. And then I can go to my camera raw filter. It's basically like camera raw, but takes me to, it's a filter. And look what I see. It already tells me where it's too white. I can first of all go in and play with the temperature. When you see this whole thing, the dark, that's not good. Why is it not good? Because that tells you that these are the areas that's going to go and see. I'm going to not have colors in there later. So if I click on that, that's when you see the clipping of the colors. Not good. So already I'm going to go in and play with that. I don't want to see any of the reds. I'm going to go in and play with the exposure. So if I see here, see, I'm always check it out. If it's like that, this is bad because I'm losing. It's underexposed, not good. More exposed is good. At least you can take it down. If there's no colors, I'm stuck. So I can go back here and do less exposure over here. And then maybe play a little bit with the contrast. And then go into the highlights and the shadows. And the white, I'm not going to do anything, but maybe I'm going to bring some of the blacks. You see here, if it's too dark, don't have detail, but now I'm bringing some detail of her hair. And I'm going to play the clarity, the vibrance, and the saturation. And I can go into each one of them and play with that. The good news about it is I can go in and do it in the convert to grayscale. It's not really a regular grayscale, but it is, but I can go back and change it and I can get a great look of a grayscale image. But if I don't want to, it's fine. If I'm gonna go and click okay, I can always go back to the same area by double clicking and change it. Does that make sense? Can I go on top of that and go into levels? Yes, I can. I can do other levels. I can go in and say increase contrast or decrease or mid-tone. And now I can go back and change the stuff. And once I have that, then I'm going to go in and do my retouching. Because maybe the first thing that the client tells you or you tell yourself the, I mean, it wasn't enough colors in the image that they did. Does that make sense? So your chances is to go to adjustment layers or camera roll and then start with the entire retouching. And now I can go in and do a local retouching. I can go back again and I can go back here to the area and I'm going to go back here and do another layer and I'm going to go in and zoom into it. And I can go back and clean the stuff. And go back to the area that I don't want to have. And by the way, see there's too much makeup in this thing. You have to be really careful when you do headshots. That the makeup is not really, I mean, nothing to do with retouching in Photoshop. But you don't want the makeup to be kind of cakey looking because that's when you're going to get loose smears and things like this and then a lot of time it happens after you do a lot a big shoot again and again and again and you know from the lights and everything and that's what you see in movies they come in like you know like tap you around so you don't have a glare and things like this but I can go in so I'm not going to put it on top see what I'm doing because the levels are going to be for everything you cannot put it on top. You have to put it inside the levels. So all the retouching is going to be part of these levels that I have. If I still want to change the camera raw, I'm going to double click. And then I'm going to go in and change the stuff. And then click OK. And then I'm going to go back here. And now this is not working, right? Because... I change the level, so now I have to go back here and change that. You have to be aware of that. Does that make sense? Because that was 
a whole thing in the smart object. Does that make sense? So kind of like this is the technique I will do. And then sometime I'll make the whole thing in the one big smart object. And on top of that, I'm going to start building and building and building all things to it. Does that make sense? Any questions about any of the tools that I showed you? Any question about the smart filters? They also can be part of your retouching. If you want to make it some, because retouching is either making a nice, yes. No, no, no difference. They are the same. And why are they calling them different? Because first they came out with smart object only. And then they came out with smart filters. But smart filter can become, a, it's a smart object. Basically, if I'm going to double click on that, look what opens. Just this. So well, what are you gaining when you do smart filter too? I mean, you can go to your filter and let's say I'm going to go into the pixelate gallery and I'm going to make her into half tone, right? I can always go back here and turn it off. It's non-destructive. So all the filters become non-destructive filters. So you can go back and forth to them. But basically they are the same. So either or, either you do a smart filter before or a smart object before. You can also place and open smart filters, smart objects. You can also open, file open. I'm going to open something that I gave you and maybe you want to play with it yourself in the special seminar, in the rechat seminar. You see the retouching project? I'm going to open the final. You see it's a Photoshop file. And then I open that and you see all the stuff that I have. I have the directions that I had in there and all kind of stuff like this and everything was in there. But also I have all the layers there. You see I have the silver lady and look at it. Silver lady, she's a smart object. So if I'm going to double click on her, look at her. That's her. And everything is in there. So I can go back and say, you know what? I really don't want to have a hand over here. And I don't want the hair adjustments. And if I'm going to go and save and go back to the retouching, you see? She doesn't have that. But I could have opened it as a smart object. And now the entire thing opened as a smart object. And I can duplicate and do all kind of stuff like that. So if you have time and you feel like doing what I have in this project, that's basically all what I was talking to you in a project. All the healings and all the stuff, but are on these two people. So you have all the assets, you have the PDF, and that's gonna be a nice kind of review for you guys to go in and play with it. And really, the PDF is really step by step. I even talked to you about uh, what is, why do you do stuff like this when you're working with, um, I'm talking about like, why do you do face, I mean, why do you do stuff like this? And how do you do projects like this? And what do you start? And what the thinking around? So you can see here the concept of retouching people. And basically you can see all the stuff that I, I was talking about a lot of stuff. This has selections, but you can see the healing and the directions and everything that you have there. So if you feel like doing something like this, you have a complete project to work with. Does that make sense? So any other questions? You good?